currently, I, and now I work for Nonviolent Peace Force. So I was Peace Brigades in Indonesia, and now I'm Nonviolent Peace Force. Um, and I'll do uh, some elements of unarmed civilian protection work, as, as we call it, or, or Peace Force work. The roots for, I mean, I, both, both organizations, but I can speak more, more clearly to Nonviolent Peace Force's roots, are deeply rooted in the Gandhian idea of the Shanti Sena, sort of organizing as a force for peace. If, if we can organize as a force for war, we can organize as a force for, for peace around the principles of nonviolence. In very practical terms, it means we have developed over the years of tools, a methodology, which is tools and actions and strategies that allow us in areas where there are where there is active violent conflict to engage a relationship-based approach to working with in a nonpartisan way, sort of sort of creating safe space by utilizing our nonpartisan presence to change the dynamics around how do we manage conflict? How do we, de we deal with our differences? Instead of defaulting to violence, defaulting to uh, more collaborative win-win approaches uh, to, 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 to differences. It's all rooted in the idea that, that conflict, disagreement is absolutely inevitable. Violence does not have to be. In these magical moments when you are one-on-one, -on -one, regardless of what side of an argument you're on, connecting to some people like to use the word divinity some people are more comfortable with the word humanity in one another and everything else falls away and this is when we have our most successful moments we can be sitting at a table across from the uh the sort of version that the the nickname i always use is as sort of that what the what this person would be would be the genocidal general somebody who's maybe state or non-state controls a group of armed actors, usually men, and from on paper, from the outside, seems impossible to deal with. And then you have a moment when you really work on connecting with that person and find some basis of commonality. And often it is, we both want the people in this community to be safe. We just have different ideas about how they, they can get there. And when that happens, there creates an opportunity it's nothing magical it, 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 in terms of it doesn't suddenly bring peace across the board, but it can shift the dynamics. It can open up space and it can encourage everybody to make different choices. The other piece that I think is so important is patience and time, is that there is a, there's this sort of idea that we should be able just to get to peace very quickly and just get over ourselves. And, you know, and we, ch we say people who are living in an in, in protracted conflict, well, if they just got over themselves, it would be fine. Or that original sin, whatever it was, happened a few hundred years ago, time to get over it. But if we do the work on ourselves and we think how we can carry petty grudges around about somebody who maybe said something that maybe offended us and how we will hold that petty grudge, grudge with us, we can be much more empathetic to how something much more profound can stay with you and be entrenched. But it's, it's really sort of willing to dig in. We, our teams work, live and work in the communities that we're trying to support. They're made up of combination, but largely of people from that community. That's really important. And that, that so that it's the centering of the approach of the work is coming from those who are most impacted by violence. Principles in the way that we move forward into new locations is we go on invitation our preferred way to enter into any new place is, is if local people, local civil society knows of NP's work and reaches out to us and asks us to move into their area. That's an initial validation that's really important so that it doesn't feel that it's an international organization that's just sweeping into an area with the answers, but it's, but it's actually something that is validated by and, and initiated from local civil society that says, here's what we're trying to do. Here's where we think you can help. You know, so we're still in the driver's seat, but you can help. When there's a point where you look around and you say, it does not matter how much we do, we will never be able to help everybody here. And that, that's true. That's just true. And, and that, can take a real, that can take a real chunk out of morale. And, and that we have to be in a place where we, we are checking our egos, recognizing we're all contributory to a process and we're all contributing to something in, any, in, in the way that we can and that we focus on what's right in front of us. And it is totally valid to be able to make, to, to contribute 
to helping somebody feel one person feel safer that day. One of the outcomes of, of sort of the, the aftermath of the, of the murder of Mr. Floyd was that the Minneapolis uh, High School District decided that they no longer wanted to partner with the Minneapolis police for security within the schools. But that left them with a, what are we gonna do next? So we've been one of the partners in this process of sort of doing training for their new civilian led security teams uh, to use a UCP approach in schools that we all make, can all make as big of a contribution wherever you are. This is, it's not something you don't have to say, I'm leaving my family, I'm going to deploy to another country. You do it in your own home, with your own family, with your own self to start with. And the starting place is doing this work on ourselves, recognizing our own reactions, our, the violence and the, the, what could be emerging as hate, even in the way that we speak or think about other people, things we read. We're so polarized these days. You know, when we meet somebody, we're doing a checklist of whether I can have a further conversation with you. And if you if you are not on my checklist, then that's it. I'm no longer willing to have a conversation with you. We're never going to build a more peaceful, just society if we do that. <laughs>